Uh, thanks everyone for joining my talk. I'm Toby and I'm the video development coordinator for the digital student experience team here at the University of Lincoln. I'll be talking you through how you can enhance your teaching and learning by embedding digital media within the curriculum. I'll discuss why we should do this before going on to talk about how we can do this and what digital media outlets are being explored here at the University of Lincoln. When it comes to online teaching, we tend to replicate the familiar, for example, lectures. This can be the case for asynchronous teaching where we might just use a recorded lecture. We know how to present a lecture, students understand the lecture format and know how to attend them, but are they the correct method of engagement and are they engaging enough? It's important to keep our teaching method as engaging as possible, as this ensures that students are interacting with the information and retaining it, so not just in one ear and out the other. There are a few consistent issues that academics face when thinking about exploring different teaching and learning formats. I'm sure that you're all aware of this, but academics are very busy people. It's all well and good to have an idea, but what if you don't have the time to explore it? Additionally, you are extremely knowledgeable people in your fields, but you may not be aware of how to use some of the digital tools that are available or even what digital tools are available to you. So that ultimately leads to the questions, what can we be doing differently to engage with our students and make the most of online opportunities and resources? And how can academics be supported in this creation to account for their time and skills? The University of Lincoln's Digital Education Department in collaboration with the Digital Student Experience team deliver a range of digital media tools to academics to create a dynamic curriculum of teaching. We provide self-service tools that are backed up with learning resources. These are designed to give academics control of what they produce, minimise the training time, and to enable academics to fit the use of the tools around their time. We also provide digital media tools that are supported by digital media producers within the digital student experience team. This enables academics to hand off their big ideas to skilled team of professionals, therefore not taking away the academics time. Both of these provisions are supported by the digital education department to ensure that they deliver teaching and learning outcomes, as well as to ensure that the content produced can be used every year. I will now present the different self-service and supported digital media tools and demonstrate how interactive and engaging content can enhance teaching and learning. So starting off with the self-service tools, um, we offer a lot of self-service tools for academics to use. The University of Lincoln offers staff and students free LinkedIn learning accounts. With this, staff can create learning paths which are compiled playlists of related video courses on a specific topic. Academics can choose existing material on LinkedIn learning or use systems like Panopto, our online lecture recording system, to embed self-created videos within these paths. Padlet is an online virtual bulletin board where students and teachers can collaborate, reflect, share links and pictures in a visually engaging way. And Poll Everywhere can be embedded within a presentation. Students participate by using mobile devices to answer questions or contribute to polls in real time, which is displayed in the presentation. <clears throat> We are looking into more self-service digital media tools such as H5P, <clears throat> which uh, enables academics to create, share and reuse rich interactive content in web pages and virtual learning environments such as Blackboard. This includes interactive presentations uh, and video with clickable information pop-ups, um, games, personality quizzes, questionnaires, timelines and more. So, moving on to the supported digital media tools, but first, um, <clears throat> sorry for that. so the University of Lincoln strives to enable students uh, the opportunity to develop and grow alongside their studies. I see people posting H5P, which is great. Uh, the digital student experience team demonstrate this by hiring student producers who support and create these digital tools. These include video producers, animators and graphic designers. The digital media tools I'm about to discuss are those that are supported by these digital media producers. So firstly, we've got location-based videos. 
So those student video producers film location based footage to be constructed into a video for use in teaching. This can take the form of scenarios and case studies, and these are great um, for future proofing teaching in a visually dynamic way. So I'm just going to show you one of these videos. So we're now at zone seven, um, which is basically all birch trees. So what, what's happened here is this will all be natural regeneration. Um, there was probably bare ground and all of the birch trees seeds have blown into this area. So that's just an example of location based videos. So talking heads, this is a high quality medium of students or academics talking um, on camera. So these can be embellished with text, graphics, uh, images and additional footage. We've recently worked with the nursing programme to ask their students for their advice um, for students going on placement. You might have seen one of these videos uh, in this morning's talk. Um, so hearing tips from other students, especially, for example, in this video, makes the content very engaging and also very relatable. The advice I'd give to myself before I went on placement would be to be organised. Prepare myself, like get myself familiar with where I'm going, what's happening, make sure that I know exactly where I need to be. I've got my lunch, I can't go without eating. <laughs> to be open, there's lots of aspects of nursing out there and you're not going to enjoy every single one. So that's an example of some student talking heads. Uh, we've also got location-based 360 videos. So we utilise 360 technology for a similar purpose to the normal location-based videos. Um, here we've used a 360 video camera to give a first-person view of an individual who has been in an accident. Um, this can make your teaching very immersive and engaging. I'll just show you a bit of that. So yeah, that's just one example of a location-based 360 video. Um, <clears throat> so we've recently worked with the School of Geography to produce a 360 virtual tour. Again, this is using the 360 degree technology and using 360 degree cameras. This displays presentations and images and location-based videos within an interactive environment formed of 360 photos. This uh, particular example was designed to give students the opportunity to revisit a field trip, um, but with extra information through different pop-ups. And again, this is a very immersive experience, uh, which obviously makes the whole experience a lot more engaging. So this particular video is just a how-to video that is placed within the 360 tool, but it also demonstrates what the 360 tool is like. Welcome to the virtual 360 field trip. You are currently at one of the entrances to the hospital plantation in between zones three and four. There are 12 zones in total with plenty of resources for you to engage with. You will find information points scattered around the zones with further information and photos and also videos. Please take the time and view all of these. So that's an example of a 360 virtual tour that we've created. Text animation, the student animators create a variety of different animations using the skills and software that they have developed within their program. Text animations can make heavy text based resources come to life, uh, making them much more visual and engaging. I'm sure you realise that those students who actively engage with their learning tend to do better. But did you know engagement is more than just attending lectures? Here's what engagement is and how it can benefit you. Whether it's blended with on-campus teaching, supported with online activities, or your whole course is online. So that's just a quick snippet as I'm a bit conscious about time. Um, so 2D animation can be used to a similar effect uh, by adding dynamic visual elements to learning resources. So here's an example of that. Young Bella Heller became a woman of property at an early age. She emerged into the historical record of 13th century Lincoln as a businesswoman, buying and selling city centre land and increasing her sphere of influence. The best record of her growing stature? The wax seals of deeds and documents which provide a glimpse into how Bella developed her identity as a businesswoman. 
Our story begins in the mid-13th century, in the Lincoln suburb of... Butwork? Wait, Butwork. But... what? Budwork, and its merry assortment of folk. So there we go, it's also a blend of um, live action footage as well, in that case. Um, 3D animation is the next level of animation. Here it has been used by ICT to inform students on protecting their university accounts. This can equally be used to visualise a learning resource into something um, a lot more memorable. Passwords. We all have them, we all try to remember them, and we are always being told to have lots of different ones. Passwords can be a pain, but there is a good reason why we need to have strong ones. Let's talk about everything you need to know about protecting your University of Lincoln account. How do I keep my passwords safe? Here's what the university recommends. And finally, we've recently invested in video booths. So these are easy to set up video kits that staff can use to record high quality pre-recorded teaching sessions. Um, we can set these up in an office and leave it with you to record lots of high quality pre-recorded sessions um, over a day or over a few days, um, which can be great if you're recording micro lectures or you're recording tutorials, um, anything like that really. So that covers all of the self-service tools and the supported tools that can enhance teaching and learning. Here are my contact details if you're interested in enhancing your teaching with the use of digital media tools and are an academic at the University of Lincoln, please do drop me an email. If you are not from the University of Lincoln and you want to discuss this further or if you just want to stay in touch, uh, you can follow me and message me on LinkedIn. Um, just with our remaining time, which I realise isn't um, isn't a lot of time, um, but I'd like to get some of your ideas on how you can use these digital tools in your teaching. Um, Steve has just put a link in the chat um, of this Teams call. The link is also on the slide and there is a QR code too. Um, so please, uh, can you click on this link and it will take you to a Padlet, uh, one of the tools that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and please may you share how you could use these tools in your teaching. I've given an example for each one to give you an idea of what to put, um, but this will not only help me get a better understanding of how we can use our services um, better, but also it gives you the opportunity to think about how digital tools can be used to enhance your own teaching. I will leave you with that now. Um, please feel free to keep adding your ideas throughout the day, and I look forward to reading them after the conference. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you have had a fan. I hope you have a fantastic afternoon. Um, and I might have a bit of time to take some questions, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much, Toby. That, that was really interesting and really clear what you've been doing there. We do have time for one question. Please do use the Padlet to, to reflect now over the next few days. But any questions? I mean, there's nothing coming up yet, but if I may ask one, how did you overcome the challenges of supporting video production during the pandemic? Um, so, well, we did, we did a lot of, um, we, well, we relied on Teams a lot um, and recording lectures, things like uh, things like that. That's also what kind of spawns the video booths as well, um, is to, you know, we're giving uh, academics the opportunity to use these tools themselves. Um, it doesn't involve, you know, such a uh, having a team of people present with them. Um, but yeah, a lot of it's just you know, online support really, um, and finding other means of creating content. The two D animations and text animations. To be fair, the text animation was heavily relied upon, um, just because it's quicker to produce, um, and it doesn't require any form of real life filming. Um, just a lot of um, professional editing, which our students uh, are able to do. Karen's just asked, I'll just take this one question. Um, what do you have in your portable video kit? So we have um, two high quality Canon cameras um, and it comes with two lights. I'll tell you what, I'll just quickly nip back. Uh, you can be able to see it here. So you've got two cameras and you've got these two big LED lights. Um, you got a laptop which it all feeds into. Um, you also get like a little vision mixing board as well, so you can switch between the two cameras 
um, live during the recording as well. Um, we do also have um, a top down um, tripod uh, so the camera can be face downwards. So say you're, um, you're showing something physical, um, like drawing or anything like that, you'll be able to see it as, um, as you are writing it. The students will be able to see that from that perspective. Um, and it's something that we're looking into um, improving as well. So we'd like to hear uh, academics ideas on what other tools that we can add to that kit to make it more useful um, for any specific programs and things like that.